what do you uh, expect will be the next few triggers as we're going down the next few weeks um, into the next quarter? What to really watch out for here? I, I think really at the end of the day, uh, what we want to see is less volatility on the currency side. Um, some of that has already been established in the last sort of few weeks. Um, but if we can stem the tide across emerging markets in terms of currency depreciation, that I think will give people more broader conference to, to reassess the asset class overall. That should also help stem the outflows which have been plaguing everybody everywhere uh, and maybe move it from you know, a few months type uh, challenge more to a few weeks type of scenario. That would certainly be very, very helpful. And would you expect that as we get into September and now there's you know, talk of partial tapering in September, whether they'll bring it down by only perhaps you know, $35 billion, etc., uh, what would you expect then around that time? So if we are in a, in a scenario where the tapering can actually sort of, um, you know, take its course because we have an improvement in the U.S. labor market, I, I think at the end of the day, the, the, you know, the great violence in terms of the adjustment has already been behind us. When U.S. Treasury yields jump from 1.6 to 2.6, the next move higher from 2.6 to, say, 3%, should be more, you know, should be absorbed by the markets in a more friendly fashion. Uh, that will also be, uh, I think, a, a more benign environment also for emerging markets. And that, uh, indeed, as you say, that could be something that we could look forward to perhaps in, in August, September. Late, late August and then perhaps in mid-end of September.